They say that time is money. But when it comes to your gadgets, time could mean something else. Those milliseconds, hertz, and teeny tiny gaps in speed can make all the difference. From refresh rate, to response time, to touch sampling rate. Understanding the nuances among them gives the new meaning on how we experience content in our devices. Hey everyone, CJ here of Yugitech, and let's discuss how these figures matter. Before we delve into the specifics, keep in mind that these parameters don't apply to just smartphones. For example, the same principles also apply to computers, where the CPU, GPU, and monitor work together to achieve higher refresh rates. Though when it comes to PCs, it's not as simple as just buying a monitor with a 144Hz branded box. The system specs and how powerful it is will still determine how high the refresh rates can go. That, along with response time and touch sampling rate, these are all crucial factors that determine a device's overall responsiveness and smoothness. And those higher figures subjectively determine a better user experience. Now, onto the one that almost always headlines the display spec sheet, refresh rate. Measured in Hertz, refresh rate is how many times per second a display can generate a new image. The higher the refresh rate, the more information our eyes can perceive per second. This means a smoother and more enjoyable experience, which translates to a really good advantage for competitive gaming, most notably first-person shooters. For example, if a display has a 144Hz refresh rate, it is, quite literally, refreshing the image at 144 times per second. Right now, Alienware holds the title with the fastest refresh rate in a gaming monitor, reaching up to a whopping 500Hz. With that said, we also need to consider that if you want the absolute fastest experience out of the fastest refreshing gaming monitor, you would need a powerful system to go along with it. That way, you'll be able to achieve higher frame rates per second, or FPS, and really take advantage of that lightning-fast refresh rate. But wait, aren't FPS and refresh rate the same? Essentially, these two terms describe similar concepts. However, they are actually different from each other, and this difference lies in their point of origin. Simply put, the frame rates are determined by the GPU and CPU while the refresh rate is determined by the display or monitor itself. But this is where two issues come up, compatibility and what display professionals call screen tearing. Refresh rate and frame rate both impact what you see on the screen. If your graphics card and processor are not powerful enough, but you have a monitor with a high refresh rate, you're basically not enjoying the full benefits of your display and vice versa. If the frame rate and refresh rate are not in sync, screen tearing may occur. Imagine a single screen refresh displaying multiple frames at once. Thankfully, technologies like NVIDIA's G-Sync or AMD's FreeSync exist for this reason, balancing the frame rate and refresh rate to reduce screen tearing. For smartphones, the science behind it is all more simplified for us, the consumer. This is because the hardware necessary already comes in a complete package within the vessel of a smartphone itself, unlike desktop computers which require different components to be built. However, there's still a common problem with the smartphones that feature high refresh rate displays, and that is the battery drain. To address this, smartphone OEMs have been implementing what they call Adaptive Sync. This feature adjusts the display's refresh rate dynamically, depending on the user's operation or the content that is being displayed. Take a look at Apple's promotion, for example. Fancy name for something that essentially just describes a 120Hz panel, or so you think. Fun fact, Apple themselves are the ones who developed LTPO, short for Low Temperature Polycrystalline Oxide, which basically is the backbone hardware that makes dynamic refresh rates possible. In their demo, the iPhone's refresh rate changes periodically, from as low as 10Hz when viewing a static image, to over 120 of Hertz when scrolling or navigating through the iOS. Response time is often overlooked when it comes to monitors. But if you are a gamer or someone who works in video post-production, animation, 
or even motion graphics, it impacts the experience nonetheless. Measured in milliseconds or ms, response time describes how fast a pixel changes from one color to another. Displays with a response time of 1 millisecond are ideal for fast-paced activities such as competitive gaming, as they result in less motion blur, while 5 milliseconds still provide a good viewing experience. Displays with 10 millisecond response times, or higher, usually LCD, may have a noticeably unwanted motion blur, or more accurately, displaying ghosting. Moreover, response time is sometimes confused with latency or even input lag. Latency is the delay between an action and its corresponding input response on the screen. And this can be caused by a variety of factors, such as network connectivity and processing power. For instance, in online gaming, if there's a high latency between the player's input and the server's response, the game may feel slow or unresponsive. This is what local gamers are experiencing when they are chatting up mataas ping or high ping. When you tap or click on something, there's a slight delay before the action reflects on screen. That's called input lag, and it can be caused by all sorts of things, like latency. Other factors could be how powerful your device is, what kind of display technology it uses, or even what kind of input device you're using. If your device has high input lag, it can feel rather sluggish and unresponsive, which is a major bummer when you're trying to play fast-paced games. Last but not the least, let's talk about the touch sampling rate, which is basically how quick your device registers touch input. The higher the rate, the more responsive your screen is to your touch. This is especially important for touch-enabled devices like smartphones, portable tablets, and even drawing tablets that use a stylus. If the rate is too low, it can feel like your device is taking forever to respond to your touch, which can be super frustrating in real-world use. Gaming phones such as the Nubia Red Magic 8S Pro and the Asus ROG Phone 7 Ultimate can achieve touch sampling rates of up to 960 or 720Hz respectively. This makes them ideal for playing first-person shooter games like Call of Duty Mobile, as they can quickly and accurately track your aim. Understanding the difference between refresh rate, response rate, and touch sampling rate is super important if you want to get the most out of your devices. I mean, these factors can make or break your experience when it comes to the smoothness of your scrolling or the accuracy and responsiveness of your aim. So, the next time you're in the market for a new device or display, don't forget to pay attention to the numbers and make sure you're getting the best possible hardware for your needs. After all, time might be money, but a better user experience is priceless. So, did you learn something new today? Let us know what you guys think when you hear the term high refresh rate in the comment section below. And if you like this video or found it informative, do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel to watch more, and click that bell icon to stay notified of future uploads. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And visit yugatech.com to stay updated with the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, I'm CJ of Yugatech, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!